Hey, I'm Colton Lindsay, financially free by the age of 32. I've been doing these reaction videos and I actually have a ton of fun with them. Today my team's got set up. One of my favorites, you know him, you love him. Hopefully you do, if you're not, you're freaking weird. His name is Mr. Tony Robbins. I am a huge raving fan. I'm part of the Platinum family here, Platinum partnership with him. And so every year I go to his Platinum Financial Mastermind. We went to Sun Valley, Idaho last year. So I know the dude is just freaking crazy when it comes with some, some great education. I don't know what we're actually gonna be going through today. So let's, let's watch. Someone says to me, I stopped smoking, it's been eight days. And I say, why are you counting? So you can tell people how long you lasted this time? Like if I went to somebody and, and I said to you, hey, you know, Lewis, you want a cigarette? You're not gonna say, what brand is it? You're gonna go, no, right. I'm not a smoker. Notice how people are, I'm not one of those. That's not my identity. Identity is the strongest force in the human personality. So I thought we were gonna be talking about money here, but it's very clear that we're talking about something else. I completely agree with him. I believe that 80% of our success, of our happiness, it's psychological and emotional. There's the science of achievement and then there's the art of fulfillment. And here's what's interesting though, if we're gonna talk about identity, your identity can also smash you. So let's say that our identity is attached big time to money and success and then all of a sudden the market shifts or the business falls apart or whatever. Are we going to be attached to that with our identity to where it emotionally brings us down? And we can shift our identity like that. And as you saw, Tony, he says, no, I don't smoke. I'm not a smoker. I'm detaching from that thing. And he's attaching to not being that thing. Same thing with money, health, relationships, whatever it is. Let's see what else we got on here. I always tell people the most valuable lesson I got from my mentor, Jim Rohn, was I asked my father worked two jobs. We were always broke. We had no money for food, and we lived in a community we moved to, which was, I thought they were all rich, and we were on the other side of the tracks. It was a lower middle class, but compared to where we lived before, these people seemed rich compared to us. And I, I just didn't understand it. And Jim said to me, Tony, it's not about the value of your soul, it's about the value of you in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And your father's skills are not that valuable. Well, the research now shows it's being done at Yale, it's being done overseas in England as well, and they found that 40% of all jobs they project in the next 10 years are going to disappear because of technology. It's gonna be replaced by an algorithm, it's gonna be changed, you know, all these guys on Wall Street, you're seeing all these algorithms take over and they're getting rid of all these traders, right? It's changing radically these, in these hedge funds. I've never heard Tony explain it this way from Jim Rohn, but oftentimes we get confused on, well, hey, they're a good soul. They're a child of God, whatever. And, and I once had a coach say to me, hey, look, let's just go ahead and categorize everyone in that spot, but do their behaviors line up? And I've heard Tony teach this many, many times. Just because they're a great soul doesn't mean their behaviors belong in your business, belong in your relationship, belong in your, your investment partnership, whatever it is. What does matter is the amount of value you bring to the marketplace. He's also saying in this, which I think is absolutely important, is 40% of the jobs will be gone in the next 10 years. My question is, is your job one of them? I think one of the biggest opportunities, in fact, you're watching me here right now, you see so many influencers and, and uh, uh, infopreneurs today using social media, whether you're watching this on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, it doesn't matter. You're seeing people have information exchanged in value. And I think one of the most important skills that you can learn over the next decade is organization of information that you're trading. Because when you can give a structured information, people are gonna pay you. Here's a good example. You can go to my YouTube. You can learn all of this for free. You just gotta go pick it out. Or you can pay me $100 a month and I'm gonna give it to you in a structured format so you can get there faster. People are gonna pay the $100 a month. The question is, is do you bring enough value to the marketplace that the marketplace respects you to pay you $100 a month for what it is that you're doing? And whether it's $100 a month or you know some of our programs are as many as $50,000 for an annual membership. When you look at it like that, the question you have to ask yourself is, am I adding value to the most important asset in my life, which is myself? That's why I pay Tony so much freaking money. So I can add value to myself. Tony's a valuable dude, what he's created. He's got patterns and he's teaching me an organized way so I can present to you, present it to my clients, and then we can continue to scale from multiple seven figures to an eight figure company. There's three Ps that you gotta annihilate, crush, or destroy if they're getting in the way of your progress in a relationship or your career or your happiness or your health. 
These are the three P's that make learned helplessness. Number one, you think the problem is permanent. Once you've had enough disappointment, sometimes your brain doesn't want to get disappointed, so it's a permanent problem. Please write down, no problem is permanent. Only your soul is permanent. Nothing's forever. Everything changes. Everything eventually ends and something new begins. That's part of life. Those are the seasons of life. The second P that keeps people learn helplessness so they don't change, this belief's got to be annihilated, broken through, and that it's pervasive. That means that because my relationship's not great, my whole life is horrible. And you're forgetting you do have health, or you do have friends, or you do have a job, or you do have whatever. I can breathe. And the third one is we think the problem is personal. There's something wrong with me. And if you start believing that, it becomes self-fulfilling. You give up. See, I'm not good enough. I'm not beautiful enough. I'm not smart enough. I always screw it up. So those three P's got to be destroyed. I completely agree, especially when Tony talks about permanence. One of my favorite concepts was learning from a Buddhist monk the idea of impermanence, that everything's going to start and end, and one end is a new beginning. The idea, though, of your soul, my soul being permanence, is one of the things that fascinates me the most about religious text and principally the way I grew up with inside of the Mormon religion. I don't actually participate in that today but it was this concept of this idea that my soul was here before i was born it's here while i'm here and it's going to be here after i die and these are just new phases and new stages so i absolutely agree but the challenge is we get stuck with even a piece of pervasiveness what he talked about number two that this is permanent and if we start to think oh and he used the example of relationship but let's say my finances suck right now and it gets pervasive and thinks my whole life sucks and that then becomes a story that we believe is permanent. That would be a horrible way to live. And it's really what it's doing is pushing the shame button, which leads to the third P that he really talked about. And ultimately, though, that third P is, is pushing in to where I'm not enough. The problem is with me personally, as, as he shared. If the problem is with me personally and it's permanent and it affects all my area of life, you can see why that is a recipe to hate life and you can see why he wants to have you and help you annihilate it. He's done it, he's helped me do it. I recommend you do the same. Skip a meal, but don't skip reading. Read 30 mm. minutes a day, I don't give a damn what it wow. is. Read something that's gonna change your life. And the second thing I tell people is feeding your mind's great, but you gotta also strengthen your body. Mm. And you do that as an athlete yeah. naturally. I learned to do that because fear is physical, mm. right? You know where you feel it. And if you go work out, if you go lift, if you go run, even if you're out of shape, you just go for an intense <clears> walk, that experience alone changes you. Like every day in my life, the first thing I do before I do my priming, if I'm at one of my homes, I jump in some hot water for fun and then I jump in freezing water. And what it does is like, it's teaching my brain, I tell my brain what to do and it doesn't. Mm. It doesn't feel like it, it doesn't want to do it. And every cell <laughs> in your body is alive, right? It's training your body to be strong because a strong body could strong mind and vice versa. Yeah. The third thing I tell people is find a role model. And when you start seeing that somebody else can do it and you see they really did, mm. You start to believe, you start to get certain. And then the fourth thing I tell people is it's massive action and constantly change your approach. And then it's find somebody worse off than you are and help them. Because when you do that, it gets you out of yourself. Look, I love what Tony's talking about because it goes to, even from the first video that I watched with him today, is am I adding value to the marketplace? And the only way I can add value to the marketplace is by increasing my own value. I'm my number one asset. He talks about fear being physical. Fear is anticipation of pain in the future, but you feel that physically in your body. So if you're afraid of the future financially, or that you're never getting in a, in a great, a credible relationship, or that you're gonna die or be sick or whatever, that physically becomes a part of what you're experiencing every single day. But if you can command a different experience throughout your body, he uses cold plunge. I happen to use a cold plunge. You wonder why? Because it's my mentor. I've identified patterns that work and then I use those patterns and when I use those patterns it increases my value to the marketplace. Are you, are you starting to get a sense, you're starting to, to already see and hear what has to happen in order to transform. It's identified patterns. And that's the, the, the direction that we're going, especially with technology. You're able to see this today. 20 years ago, you couldn't see this information so quickly. You have so much information you can see right here on YouTube or on Instagram. But then the question is, one of the ways you add value to the marketplace is you get structured in your patterns. You understand your patterns. You can see your patterns clearly. You hear the patterns, you're aware of them, and you can apply them. And those that aren't working, you can disrupt them and you can create new ones. New ones that create residual revenue, that creates an abundance financially, an incredible romantic relationship with your partner, great parenting with your kids, a physical body that's optimized. These are all of the things that patterns can generate and increases your value, and then your value increases into the marketplace and you become invincible, you become outstanding. 
what does an extraordinary life look like for you at the next level? L- let me explain what I mean by this. When I ask people what they want, they go, I want money, I want this, I want a better relationship. I would argue, and you tell me if I'm wrong, I would argue that all the things you want, the money, the business, the freedom, the great relationship, the more health and more energy, great family, whatever, that's another way of saying I want an even more extraordinary quality of life. How many want a greater quality of life, even though you have a great life right now? How many want an even more quality of life? If it's true, make some noise. Let me hear you out there. And by the way, that is very healthy. As I said before, the only thing that makes you happy is progress. We grow or we die. There's no in between. If your relationship's not growing, it's dying. Businesses either grow or they die. That's our, that's our lives. I completely agree with what Tony's saying here. I personally, I don't know about you, I want an even more extraordinary quality of life. I have a beautiful life. I look, overlook the lake here at my home office. I have a beautiful virtual studio for our company. I have a second home. I have real estate event. I have beautiful life. But you know what I want even more of? More extraordinary. I want to experience more extraordinary. And I'm either growing or dying. You're either growing or dying. And one of the interesting things about growing, though, is pain and resistance is required. And that's why the resilient, especially inside a business, they're going to innovate. They're going to anticipate. They're going to be able to create a new effective roadmap regardless of what's going on, trusting that they're gonna always have an equal or greater miracle. That's the seed of defeat always gives you the seed of a new opportunity. And that's what makes progress possible when you're able to progress and relax and expand your threshold of control. I freaking love Tony. I want your listeners or viewers to really think about this. You do not experience life. You experience the life you focus on. That's it. If you focus on what's wrong, what's wrong is always available. So is what's right. And so our focus produces our meanings and emotions, which produce the actions of our life. So it really starts with the patterns of your focus. Do you tend to focus on what you have or what's missing? Most achievers that are looking to make progress, I've dealt with millions of them over the years, as you all know, I'm one, you're one, right? Most achievers, that progress thing is really important. They're like, oh, we've got to have the next thing. And that's really wonderful, but it's only one way of doing things. And so it's like saying to yourself, wait a second, I'm going to, regardless whether there's progress or not, I'm going to find the good in this. I'm going to find the great in this. And what that does is it produces a different fuel to live your life from. And from that fuel, it's easy to make progress. He's explaining, in my way of saying it, the process of manifestation, our thoughts that we focus on. They affect our feelings or emotion and ultimately the actions or decisions we do or don't take. And if our focus is on the anticipation of fear or pain, that's fear. Guess what? Our actions and our, our decisions are going to be based out of that. And our results are going to be less than ideal. Whereas if we feel good, we feel better. We're going to progress more easily because we're more creative and we make better decisions. We take better actions. We take action with more confidence and certainty into the future, which then explodes better results. And the two parts, and Tony's talked about this over and over again, is the science of achievement. With a lot of achievers like me, we're almost, I'm almost too a fault obsessed with it. You might be as well. But then there's the other piece, which I've had to learn to master things to T. Harv Eker, Tony Robbins, some of my other mentors, and that's the art of fulfillment. That's what, when the plan is different than what my plan is, God's plan is, is different, it's not getting what I want exactly, I can be unhappy. I don't know if you've ever done that. That's where my expectations are here and my conditions are here and that leaves a gap. But if we could change those expectations to appreciation, like Tony says, our appreciations, change our expectations to appreciation, then all of a sudden we can feel better and we can progress and we can regroup and we create a new roadmap, a new effective roadmap. We can be happier and manifest even quicker. I freaking love everything that Tony shares today. This is this is why I'm part of the Platinum Partnership because proximity truly is power. And when I can invest in a deeper proximity, I'm just getting these little clips on shorts. This is what makes the information so extraordinary. I can get these shorts from Tony right now and it recalls for me now at this point over to 40 different events I've been with Tony part of his partner partnership for multiple years now, three years, and then I absorb that. I'm around a peer group of people that think and act and feel and do this way. But if I'm just watching clips, guess what? I don't advance as quicker because my thoughts and what I focus on are different. Therefore, my emotions that lead to actions are different. But if I get absorbed in the proximity, my focus gets hyper-focused on the story, the thoughts that create an elevated level of emotion, and therefore I act faster.
I play bigger. I have more happiness because of that and I progress faster because progress really is happiness. Thanks for watching, gang. I'd really love to hear what your thoughts are on today's videos. They're one of my favorites we've done so far. Show me your comment section and smash the like button and do me a favor because one of the things that Tony talked about in this video today was when you're finding a level of success and progress and happiness, go help someone else that might not be there. Go share this video with someone that you think would positively impact them and make their day just a little bit lighter. I can promise you it'll make your day lighter. Awesome, thank you. Drop your comments down below and make sure to reach out and see how we can support you. We'll see you later.